Secretary of State, uh, and then Secretary of State Clinton, and then head of CIA, General Petraeus, that we provide weapons to the resistance in Syria. Did I you did. support that? We did. You did support that? We did. Now, that is interesting uh, because Defense Secretary Panetta and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Dempsey, saying they both supported arming Syrian rebels fighting the Assad regime. We're back now with the panel. The interesting part of this is, is we had known for some time that Secretary Clinton, then Secretary Clinton, and David Petraeus, when he was heading the CIA, came up with this idea to arm and train the Syrian rebels opposing this Assad regime. What Senator McCain elicited today at this hearing is the fact that, that the then Defense Secretary Panetta and the then Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, General Dempsey, also supported it. Only one problem, the president opposed it, so it didn't happen. Nina, what do you make of that? Yeah, the pres this, uh, this is big news today. Um, the president rebuffed uh, this plan. What has happened in the months since this plan was proposed? Well, we now, not just in the months, I mean, in, in fairness, dating back, but uh, we, the, the UN representative to Syria describes cities inside Syria that looks like cities of Berlin in 1945. You've got 60,000 Syrians dead, 7, 700,000 to 800,000 refugees going up to a million, which he said could collapse Jordan and Lebanon just under the weight of those refugees. Then what you've got inside Syria is the rise of Al Qaeda linked forces as part of that opposition. This is something that Hillary Clinton herself warned about just a few days ago. So by not stepping in, I mean, everyone agrees that Assad's going to go. It's a question of where or when. We have not stepped in to shape the opposition into a viable, not only a viable force, but a force that is valuable instead of al-Qaeda links. Uh, of course, we don't know if we did get involved that necessarily True. True. either one that they would mm -hmm. topple Assad or that al-Qaeda still wouldn't have a big role. Right. But it certainly raises the question. I mean, let me ask you about that, Pete. I mean, here you have Panetta, right. uh, Dempsey, Clinton, Petraeus, really the entire national security team, with the exception of the national security advisor, saying, arm the rebels. The White House said no. Why do you think not? Yeah, I just add to that that our allies as well, Saudi Arabia, Britain, France, Qatar, uh, they understood the importance of, of Syria. Why not? Look, I think that the president, uh, at his core, does not like to intervene in these kinds of things. And uh, I think also during a, uh, an election, he understood that the public was war weary and he didn't want to take that, uh, that chance. I think this is going to be a big mistake in retrospect. Uh, as Nina said, you've got 800,000 people displaced, 60,000 that are dead. And Syria is really a kind of linchpin in the Middle East. And if this goes, it's going to destabilize the region. Uh, it may well spark a regional war. Uh, and if Assad fell, and if we were able to shape the uh, opposition forces, this would be a big blow to, to Iran. So I think when the history books are written, this will be a big missed opportunity. And let me, Steve, bring in one more thing, and that was Greg Palcott's fascinating and quite disturbing report today where he went to one of these refugee camps on the Turkish border. Uh, as Nina said, there are uh, 800,000 refugees have fled for various parts of the Middle East. But in this, it was really a small town, a small city, 13,000 people living like that. And, you know, on the one hand, you, you understand the president's and our country's reluctance to get involved in another conflict in the Middle East, but it's coming at quite a cost. Well, look, I mean, that was a heartbreaking report. I think it already is a moral stain on America that we didn't do anything, that we stood by. And it's particularly so because of the president's own words. I mean, he's the president. He can ro overrule his advisors. That's his job. He's elected to make these hard decisions. But if you go back to the justification that he used to support U.S. intervention in Libya, a moral justification, first and foremost, back in March of 2011, he said that the United States would be shirking its natural responsibilities if we didn't get involved. He said to brush aside America's responsibility as a leader and more profoundly our responsibility to show our fe fellow human beings under such circumstances would have been a betrayal of who we are. And then he said some nations might be able to turn a blind eye to these kinds of atrocities. And he said the United States is different. But apparently not in this instance. Apparently not, we're not. So we've now seen more than 60,000 deaths in Syria. At that time, it was 6,000 in Libya. Yeah, 60,000, some people saying 80,000, and, and it continues. That's it for the panel.